Hey guys, it's Master Great Jess, and I have with me today the MVF X08 Eclipse Gundam, brought to you by Plamod, and all of its glory finally built. Let me just start off by saying how much I love this kit. All right, I'm just gonna start off just saying that because I think it is a very cool design, a very fresh design. I mean, we have it here all built, 100%, um, and it looks amazing. Um, I love every single thing about this thing. Now, of course, with that, there are some gripes, but we'll get to those later. First of all, let's just look at the design on itself out of the box, um, because I do know that despite there being other reviews out there, I do want to chime in my piece. Um, the Eclipse Gundam, I'm going to say that when it first was announced, I was not excited about this kit. I didn't really care for it as I didn't really like seed kits um, back in the day. In fact, uh, I know that a lot of the viewers who have followed us know that, you know, I didn't really care for the Strike Gundam or any of those Gundams in general, except for maybe the Duel. Um, but building this guy and getting to hold him in my hands and actually, you know, being able to play with him, um, I've fallen in love. Now, it's a very sharp design. Uh, some would say, I know that on our Discord, I think one of our one of our friends said that uh, this is a hazard on the table, uh, and it's true. There's a lot of sharp edges, um, specifically with the shoulders, um, with these shoulder flaps, along with everything else. In fact, the whole thing looks very aerodynamic, which is, I think, what they were going for. It really gives me some vibes from uh, Zeta, uh, along with the Delta Plus more than anything. Now, I'll get to that in a little bit, but in general, as we turn them around, I know that I don't have a turntable on me, but I think it's just better if you guys can see me holding him instead of him just kind of going around. But this is the kit. Pretty sharp from the feet down here all the way to the head to these uh, ears or bunny ears as some people might call them. Everything on this kit is very, very sharp. Um, now, for some uh, that I've talked to, they're not really a fan of the sharp design, but I beg to differ. I think. It brings something new to the table. Uh, and the reason I say new is because for the Gundams, or for as much as I love Gundams, one of the main thing that has kind of plagued me with their designs is that they're all very alike. They all kind of have the same design uh, principles embedded in them, which again, is fine. Not, you know, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying that at some point, what we need is a little bit of a refresher. And I think this is what this kit does. Now, let's put him side by side uh, next to the dual Gundam. Uh, again, going back to what I said earlier, I'm not a big fan, or I wasn't, sorry. I wasn't a big fan of seed builds or designs, um, but I do like the dual Gundam. So let's put him in here. Uh, so here's a dual stood right next to the Eclipse. And as we can see, the Eclipse is a big boy. A very tall kit. Um, I think it is definitely up there a contender for one of the tallest kits when it comes to Master Grade size. That isn't the new or um, the Sasabi. Um, in fact, let me bring those out real quick. So here we have the Eclipse right up next to the new Verka. Now the new Verka, of course, is a very tall kit. I mean, it's the new, uh, but even then it holds its own. Uh, you can definitely start seeing the difference in both of them, especially now, I guess like this. The Eclipse would seem like a normal Gundam. If we take out the new, uh, which by the way is a beautiful kit, let's get this guy out of the way and bring in the real mother of Master Kits. Coined by our amazing supporter, Old School Skill, we have the Sasabi comparison size. So here's a Sasabi for a In fact, I actually have to move the camera a little bit to get him in frame because he's so big. <laughs> Um, you can see the difference. Now, one of the things that I do want to mention about the Eclipse here is how uh, thick the profile is, uh, the silhouette specifically, um, next to the Sasabi. He's, a, he's got a pretty nice wide profile, thanks to these guys right here. Again, very pointy. What I'm trying to kind of convey here by showing this to you guys is the presence that the kit has. So the Sasabi is known as one of those kits that you need to have on your shelf uh, because it just kind of sits there and it's like, hey, I'm the Sasabi and I'm super cool. Um, and then you have the Eclipse here that despite it being just a normal Master Grade, it shows that presence. I mean, we can take away the Eclipse for a second despite this being an Eclipse video. All right, and let's put just the Dual Gundam next to him. Now, as much as I love the Dual, 
we have to admit that the duel is definitely missing some presence next to the Sasabi. Um, I don't know how you guys feel. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel. Um, but the moment I put away the dual Gundam and bring back the Eclipse next to the Sasabi, again, we can see some presence. With the tallness of the kit, I feel like it will look really, really awesome on your display. Here he is up next to the Barbatos. Now, for those who don't know, the Barbatos is actually a pretty tall kit compared to other Master Grades and other kits of his grade. Um, he's, I think he's around 18 to 19 meters tall in what would be actual life. But here he is next to the Eclipse. A lot of presence. This guy conveys a lot, a lot of presence. So let's take away the Barbatos. Thank you, uh, Kevin, for letting me borrow your Barbatos. Very nicely painted. So as I mentioned, this is the Eclipse just right out of the box. Uh, this kit does include some stickers. So we have regular stickers here. Uh, you guys know how we feel about these stickers, Bandai. We don't like them, so we throw them away. Goodbye stickers. Um, the ones that do matter here are the foil stickers. Now the foil stickers are pretty nice. And whenever a kid has foil stickers, I try to include them. But this will be the kit that I will be working on for the Singularity Contest going on on the GTS Discord. If you haven't joined in, be sure to join in. First prize winner takes home a PGU. But yeah, so no color correction stickers, which I think is the best part. Um, you don't even see that in some Burkos and all that. Um, really, really cool. Wish it would have come with the water decals. Um, postability on this kit just straight out of the box is super, super cool too. Um, I feel like a little kid just playing with this. I was um, telling everybody about this kit is that it kind of refreshed my mind on Gundams. Now, I've always loved Gundams ever since I started the hobby. But, you know, like I said, at some point they become stale. But this definitely revived that passion for building them, especially for how different it is. And as you guys realize right here, this fell out. So now that we're on with the out of the box build, let's go a little bit into the flaws of this kit. So. For one of the flaws that this kit has, I know we were talking about possibility and we didn't get through it all, but we will. Um, I think that this flaw that I will be speaking of has to do with the possibility and uh, what it can, you know, do and what it can't do. Uh, so one of the one of the biggest weaknesses that I see in this kit are these uh, ankle flaps. So these little bunny ears that go over here on the uh, on the armor, as you guys can see over here. Uh, the connection for these points isn't. Uh, the best. In fact, let's bring the light over here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, it is made up of this one piece right here that's connected down here. Now, the piece down here that it's connected to is held on nicely thanks to the rest of the armor um, of this right here. Um, this should just click in place. So let me show you from the back. It slides in with this little peg. As you guys can see, the peg has a little indentation there where this flap would slide right in so let's put it right here there's a little bit it's a little difficult to do this with the camera in the way it's supposed to click in hold it out and push so i'm pulling it this way print it in and there you go now it should hold uh, but the problem is it doesn't it doesn't hold <laughs> um i think out of all four pieces because it's four armor pieces uh, that are just the same um they don't hold i could easily take them off uh, so whenever you're playing around with the legs, you're going to get a lot of that, um, a lot of those pieces falling out, uh, out of those four ones. Um, but that's one of the biggest weaknesses that I see. Now that we're on the topic of the legs, um, another thing that I want to talk about real quick is just the build. Now, for a lot of people, the feet on the Eclipse, are uh, they're weird because they're very tiny and very pointy compared to the rest of the kit. And it's completely understandable. Um, I get it, it does look weird, but surprisingly, they, these hold very, very well, uh, especially with the poses um, or just hand, standing him straight, um, as you guys can see right there. Now, granted, sometimes what really helps here is the added armor here. So these two will add, they will add a little bit of help and support there by holding on to the rest of the weight. Um, but other than that, I don't really see a problem with these. Now, aesthetically, you know, they're, they're tiny. They don't make any sense. Um, I really like them as they're they're on a ball a ball joint, um, and they can you can get you get some really nice left to right action here, um, and I'm doing that just and they hold their place right. They really do hold their place. Um, posing the legs it might be a little difficult to some, um, especially when you start really playing around with them, uh, because as you guys can see the legs just came apart, um, and so now that I'm here. I'm able to show 
So you saw how easy I took this one off. Again, this is the one that fell earlier and I didn't put properly, but this will happen a lot. So uh, this piece right here has to connect on to right here. There is no grip at all. So what just happened? Like I said, when you start playing around with the legs, you start to see a lot of problems uh, appear, especially as I told Sean and Derek, everything from the knee above is great, but going down here, it you get into a whole mess of things. Um, so what happened here is that I pushed this too far and this popped off, so yeah, you don't wanna do that. Um, like I said down here, let's go back to the topic at hand. Uh, this piece specifically, does not grip onto this one uh, well enough. Uh, whenever you're, you're supposed to hear like a little click uh, when you put it on there, a little, oh, let's get this in there. I'm doing this in real time so you guys can see exactly what happens. I don't wanna be, there we go. So that, so there was no click, it's in there. But just look, no, no force, oh, it's out again. Oh, it's back in, oh, it's back. It's like it just kinda, so let me show this in a better, uh, scientific way so this is the piece and it's supposed to hold on but instead of clamping there's no grip it just kind of lays there like this and it's the same thing for both legs so you'll see the same thing on both legs now originally i thought it might have been the one that i got uh, that had the problem but speaking to choco falcon a, a follower of the channel um, he has the same problem uh, with his so I know for a fact that this isn't a, an isolated event. Uh, it happens to, it has happened to both of us. And to me, honestly, um, it it really kind of blows my mind that they would kind of overlook that. I do understand why maybe, but I would think that nowadays they might want to fix the whole transformation gimmick. Um, but yeah, so that's what happens with the legs. As you saw, this pops off if you pull or if you push far enough when posing. So let's put it back in. It's not a difficult piece to poop, uh, to poop, <laughs> to pop in. Um, and but yeah, going back to the bunny ears here, uh, these things will be a nightmare for you. Uh, as you guys will see later on, they were also a nightmare for uh, Derek. Uh, but anyway, going on to the rest of the body. So we have some really good bending in the knees, which I think is awesome. Um, you get some really nice posing. When it comes to that, as I said, hitting the knees and going up above, everything seems to be just great. We have some nice movement in the torso. Oh, you guys saw that, right? That wasn't even the same one. So this is the one that fell earlier. Now this is another one, and this is the one that goes within. So we're gonna keep this off, just so it doesn't keep on falling. We don't want it to uh, really mess with our, but with the rest of the video. Anyway, <laughs> um, so you got some really nice movement on the uh, hips. Um, it's missing that nice ab crunch that you would get normally from other kits. Um, but, hey, I'm not going to complain uh, since you're going to be doing a lot of aerial poses more towards the outward. Because um, it looks really, really cool. The arms on themselves have some really nice posability too. Um, they, they hold really well. Um, that's, you know, which I think is good considering that this is a transforming kit. Um, and even the shields on the sides, they don't, they, this really nice mechanic of the way they, they hook on with this piece. So let me actually take this off. Um, let me correct that. It's pretty easy to take off when you don't have a camera in your way. So it's comprised of this mechanic. Now the peg itself would be what I would feel you would see on older kits to hold down a, an armor piece like this. But if you guys see the little peg down here adds that little extra force to keep it in place. So in order to put it in, let me move out of the way here. And there you go. And as you guys saw, I've been moving them around and they don't come off at all. The side skirts and the skirts themselves, nothing to complain. They all, they're all they also based on a peg um, and they just move everywhere you want. Nothing to really worry about. With the head, uh, you get some nice movements. Um, as you guys can see, again, this is all based off transformation, right? So I think the design here is pretty cool. These are not completely hooked up. They don't hook up like they normally would or traditionally would, uh, as you guys can see. Normally, <clears throat> you get the arms, you know, like the way that humans have arms. But in this case, they're hooked to the side over here as opposed to down here. So I think that's really cool. Uh, again, that's why I get a lot of Delta vibes, the so Delta Plus vibes out of this kit. Arms are working well. Shoulders are working well. 
But now that we're on the topic, and I already mentioned it, uh, transformation, that's what I want to get to. Uh, lately, Bandai has been really good at innovating, mainly RGs, you know, like the RG Zong, you have the RG Force Impulse, the RG New. But I feel what they should do, especially if they're planning on making more transformation oriented kits, that they should really work on getting that down. Um, because I feel that this kit was designed around the idea that it was going to transform, which I feel is the biggest downside to uh, a lot of a lot of transformation uh, kits, because I feel like kits that transform tend to have some of the most unique designs. For example, right here at the Eclipse, we have the Delta Plus, which I would have in my hands, but it's in a box somewhere. There's also the Wing Zero, there's also the normal Wing, um, there's a bunch of other ones, uh, the Zeta, and so on and so on. Which I feel a lot of people would say that they're pretty cool designs, they're very unique. But the problem starts when you start sacrificing integrity of the kit for you know, a transformation gimmick. Which I feel is what exactly happened down here. The designers were more focused on making this easy to transform. Uh, instead of making this as, you know, as solid as possible. Is this something that would keep me from buying it? Not really, but I do feel that it can be very annoying. As you guys saw already on the video itself, uh, those little pieces over here have popped off uh, like four times already. I haven't really, you guys haven't seen this, but since I like to post my kits a lot, as Sean, Derek, and everybody on the GTS crew knows, uh, this has really bothered me because I've been playing around with the Eclipse for the last two, three days, and I can see how that would annoy me. Uh, other than that, out of the box, I think it looks awesome. Awesome possibility. We'll get to the transformation later on, uh, but let's move on to accessories. Accessories. This is what we have in the box ready after you build for the kit if you're just gonna play around with the Eclipse. This is not including anything that it has for the backpacks, which we'll get into a little bit later on. Uh, but the, one of the main things it has are these cool shields that go on the arms. Um, really cool design. Um, I think one of the best parts of this kit. I just really like the whole idea of having um, just things stuck to your arm. Really kind of like superhero-esque, I feel. So you get two of these, which you guys saw earlier during the video. You get these that act like sheets for the beam savers, but also become rifles themselves. In fact, they're just called beam rifles. <laughs> I know, very uh, unique name. But they also act like sheets, which I think is really cool. And I feel that if you don't have them on the kit, the kit kind of loses a little bit of uh, that um, presence that we were talking about earlier today. The design on these and the little details that it has, I think, are really a big step up for... Bandai and the way they're kind of going about things. Uh, of course, if you're someone who details your own kits, this doesn't really matter as you'll be able to do your own without any problem whatsoever. Uh, but if you're someone who likes to just build out of the box and keep them up on your display after a little bit of panel lining, um, these are gonna look great. I'll show you how those work in a little bit. Um, other things that we have are also the effect pieces that are for the shield itself. They work really cool. I'll put them on in a little bit so you guys can see. And of course you guys get hands. So on here we have the hands that grip and hold the beam saver and the beam rifle along with some open hands. Um, right now on the kit we have the closed fist. So it has that nice Superman-esque pose to it. Um, but let us let me show you how these work. I showed these to my wife and she really liked the way they worked. Uh, themselves so what you're gonna want to do I was doing it wrong don't do what I'm doing okay do it this way so this long piece in here goes in and you'll feel it you'll feel a little click it's nice and responsive and there you go it looks like one whole piece but it's not and then to take them out it's as easy as doing that I think it's just a really cool and neat design there's a little click in there like I said um, for this one let's turn this one into the beam rifle oh they come included with these two holders so you can use these either on the left or right of the kit doesn't matter both of them are already prep for the little uh, peg that goes right into the the hole yeah let's call it a hole anyway here we go so we want to turn this into the beam rifle okay no biggie let's do this real quick put this down and there you go it's a beam rifle right pretty cool pretty intuitive very nice. These may seem like they're just clamped together, but there are more pieces inside of it to hold these and to give the rest of the details in here um, because all of these are extra. And I think they're just cool. I mean, these are really cool. I like the design of these right here. So let me show you how the shield works. So normally when the shield doesn't have any of the effect parts, this is the way it'll go. 
But once you want to click on the effect parts, what you're going to do is you want to pull these out. Let me show that one more time. Really cool piece. There we go. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to take off the yellow piece. If I had a part separator, this would be easier, but I'm doing it with my fingernails. This has to go in first because it has a little pig. It'll go right into its connector right there. Easy as that. It's secured on there. We'll get it right into the square. And then you just put this piece on there. And there you go. Nice shield with a little bit of a like gauntlet looking. I don't know what you call these savers, I guess, but they're just really cool, especially when you put them in the kit, which I will in a little bit. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you also get stickers. We picked them back up because even though we hate stickers, at least that's what we get for the time being. Again, water decals are way better at Bandai, but hey, who am I to say that, right? Uh, another cool thing is you get your own base. Now, I would be inclined to pay a little bit extra on any of the kits nowadays if they just came included with their own base, even if you don't build it. Um, because I think that, especially for a kit like this that looks as cool as this, it's very difficult to want to keep it in this Superman-esque pose. Uh, you might want to keep this more in a kind of flying pose, anything else other than this. Uh, and I think it's really cool that they added that. But I'm pretty sure that they also added that due to the fact that you also have a transformation and where are you gonna put the transformation, right? This is something else that comes in the kit. I know you're like, what, runners? Okay, whatever. But these are runners that, and pieces that you will not use. Now, normally I cut out the extra pieces as you guys would, um, would know if you guys saw the turbulence video that I did a week ago. A lot of that, like, look, look, these are, this, you can make two legs from the Freedom. These are the 2.0 frame for them, and uh, it's a lot of plastic that we did not use. In fact, you can see how many pieces we use. We use these right here, and some up here, and then boom, they're all gone, except for these over here that we also use. But what I'm trying to get at is, this is a lot of unnecessary plastic. Now, I understand they have to use the molds again, you know, and money saving or whatever, but this is a lot of plastic that you do not use. I don't know how I feel about this specifically. I understand it on the turbulence scene as you normal as you technically get two kits in one um, but for this like why moving on um, let's put these on the kit let's put them up on the base and see how these look so here's the kit all nicely posed uh, this is the way that I would recommend anybody who gets this kit to have them what I mean by that is not this post specifically but on the action base and again not because it can hold itself while it's just staying on its two legs but because I just think with the nice and pointy silhouette that it has, you can get some really nice poses, some very interesting silhouettes. And I think this bad boy is ready to get some photographs taken of him. Um, and I just want to show just how nicely detailed the whole side is. I only used the beam saver on this pose along with one of the shields ready for combat. Um, and as you can see, we have a nice little X. Uh, so you get some really nice dynamics. Again, with the silhouette, the silhouette on this kit is just perfect. Uh, I think Bandai did a really great job again. Going back to the legs here, which I'm really glad that I did this. I didn't even notice this, uh, but I was playing around with the legs. This look all super dynamic, but these aren't supposed to be that far apart at all. Uh, oh, and here we go again with the with the neat thing. It's because I'm pulling this. Again, this is on me, um, but I wish it wasn't on me because it's part of the design. If this didn't have to come all the way out, I know that it looks cool. Again, it's that hook thing that we talked about. So this is what you get out of the box. This is what the kit would look like. There's zero panel lining on this one, zero stickers used, and I think it looks great. One of the coolest features and gimmicks of the Eclipse is the whole fact that it's compatible with a lot of the backpacks from the Seed series. Like I, like I said, I don't have a lot of Seed kits, but I do have some. So we're gonna swap them out and see how that works. Beforehand, I do want to show you how easy it is to get this guy ready for other backpacks. So it's as easy as pulling these pieces out right here. There you go. So these are going to be coming off, especially, especially for other pieces such as, um, oh, you'll see, you'll see. Um, but this one right here, it's ready to take on the Testament backpacks. So speaking of backpacks, let's look at the manual. The manual shows you what backpacks go with what and what you'll need to get them ready. So for this one, for example, you have the L-Striker, uh, we have um, how you can put it on the transformation, which we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, it, uh, these pieces over here, the shoulder pieces do come in other runners, not the runners that I showed you guys that I feel are a waste of plastic, uh, but they actually do come in the main runners for um, the Eclipse themselves. So the manual will help you uh, get started on swapping them out. And it also tells you how to get the Zaku gunners and stuff. Uh, which we'll get to again 
Uh, and it's this is just such a cool thing uh, to see because it just gives you a reason to bring out all of your seed kits, which we will be doing. Um, like I said, I don't have a lot of them. Let's get this guy ready over here. Straight out like that, the Eclipse is already ready for the Testament. He was just laying over there drunk after a good night out. Um, so let's swap out this backpack and put it on the Eclipse. See how that looks. So it's as easy as you have to take out the whole thing. Might be a little difficult, especially for the Testament. Here is the Testament Gundam's uh, backpack. Let's put it on here and see how this looks. So first let's bring this out and this should just slide right in as easy as that. And there we go. We have the striker pack on him right here. And look how cool this guy looks right there. So now special message to Ghost and Old School Skill who asked me to change the legs on the Eclipse from the Testament onto here because they had a problem with the tiny feet. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that. They all have separate um, pieces that connect onto that. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing it. I already tried. So that's why there was no picture of that. But here is the Eclipse with the Testament Gundam Strike Pack. It's really cool. So now let's prep the Eclipse for the Zaku backpack. As I said, it's as easy as taking these guys off. I think this is a really cool design on Bandai. Doesn't really require any effort. You do have to cut out some pieces from the runners specific for the backpack. So let's get this guy going right here. Put him on here. Look at that, look how easy and seamless this is. That's how easy that is. So this guy is now ready to accept the backpack from the Zaku, which we have right over here. Um, so here we go. Let's take off this bad boy off of this guy. There we go, we're just putting kits all over the place. And then let's get this guy right on there. And easy as that. Now for some backpacks, it'll be difficult for the Eclipse to stand up because they might, they're way heavier than, you know, like the Testament one, um, which you'll start to see some problems with the design uh, and the legs again, uh, because they'll start splitting. He likes to do the splits a lot. R remember the main part of this uh, section of the review is to show you how easy it is to switch backpacks. And look, he's as that, it already came off. Uh, it came off with the pieces themselves and then we can just add these bad boys back on there um, if we don't want to keep the adapters on there looking really smooth the clips looking really smooth so let's go on to the transformation process here now roughly this took me 22 minutes and it's sped up 1500 percent so you guys don't get to see the full 22 minutes i will comment on uh, the process now for the main part of uh, the transformation which is the leg area uh, it was kind of difficult since this is my first time doing this i wasn't kidding when i said i hadn't transformed it at all um, the below the knee area like i spoke about earlier uh, we know that the design kind of revolved around there uh, so moving those uh, little joints around can be a little tough especially if you don't have like the confidence that you're not going to break something you really have to trust yourself not to break anything it might feel like something might snap uh, but you have to put some force into some of those pieces in order to get them uh, the way that you want them or the way that the manual tells you that it should be. Uh, going on to the arm area, the arm area is also kind of iffy, uh, especially when you're bending the elbows all the way around uh, and then putting them and locking them into place with some of the pegs. They don't hold as well as they should, I don't feel. Uh, also, when you're done with the whole, like, uh, transformation you, you're gonna want to have to want it straight and look very pretty but when you're moving everything around you have to go over things over and over and over again so if you bend one piece you'll go back to it and then again just to make sure that things are straight sometimes they don't hold so was it a difficult one for sure uh, it frustrated it frustrated me a lot but like I said it was my first time and I'm sure that with more times to come it'll become an easy process Alright guys, so what you guys have in front of you is the transformed uh, version of the Eclipse Gundam. Uh, and I want to preface this part by stating that I am in no way a fan of transforming kits. It's something that I think I've mentioned a couple of times uh, throughout some reviews. I'm not the biggest fan of them. I don't really consider that I would ever want one of these kits to be in their transformed uh, version. So I do want you guys to keep that in mind as I'm going through this. I'm going to be as... Uh, unbiased as I can um, but let's start off uh, this is what it looks like this is what uh, you guys would have it as because of course you would want to have this on the display base hence why it comes with an action base uh, itself 
The um, what I really do like about it though is the little connector that holds it to the base. Uh, I can't really complain about that. Uh, I think it holds it extremely well and you get to see every single angle you'd like. But let's go on to what I don't like. So as I mentioned, I don't like transforming kits. I don't like the transform versions. Um, if I got a kit, it's because I want to have the mobile suit on itself. Uh, but uh, with this, um, I don't think it really gives it anything cool. Like it looks nice. Like the thing here is um, that by itself, it looks pretty cool. Right? Like I will admit that this is a pretty cool design because from the side and the profile, it does look like a spaceship, um, which is what they're going for as opposed to some other ones that look a little bit more like it just looks like the, the kit was turned inside out to make it seem like a spaceship. Um, but other than that, like would I keep it this way? Uh, not really. Um, I will say that Bandai did a good job in um, kind of putting this together. Normally, this is the way that it would be, but they were really smart about it. It holds two pegs here uh, that go right on top of each other with their own little peg holes and connectors that keep that together. I think that's a pretty cool side of the design on this uh, when it comes to how smart it was, it, it was done. I will say that this is one of the most infuriating transformations that I've ever gone through, um, as you guys saw uh, during the little time lapse right before this. It was just confusing. There's a lot of things that I don't uh, like after it's transformed. For example, one of the things that I don't enjoy are the way the arms are set up to kind of look like this here. It's a little difficult to keep this yellow and this white connected if you're going to post this around or if you want to get it nice and even and straight. If you guys look at it from this side, it kind of looks lopsided. Now, of course, this could be because I'm terrible at transforming kits. Maybe that's the reason why I don't like them. Uh, but there is definitely something missing um, from the wow factor for me when it comes to this. Uh, there's nothing much you can do uh, aside from having it this way. So I guess that's really what it kind of just goes for. I guess if you are a big fan of the Eclipse, maybe you, you'll get two. One to keep like this and the other one to keep like the regular uh, kit. Uh, I do want to mention that on the booklet, what you have or on the manual, you will get a section with the backpacks, which we talked about earlier. The backpacks don't only go on this while it's in its mobile suit. Um, you can actually see the connectors are still there. So this is the backpack. This is the back of the, uh, this is the back of the eclipse. One of the main things, like I said earlier, is the whole idea that you can put a lot of backpacks on this thing uh, from the strike series uh, of kits for Master Grade. And uh, going on to that, I'm going to use the, what I'm using here is the one from the Testament, um, which has a little arm like this. And you can still put it on there add more things to make it cooler, add a bunch of other backpacks. But again, in my own personal opinion, I don't think anything is really done uh, to make this look cool. There's no reason why I would have it this way. Is it a cool design? Yeah, but it's just a chore to turn it back to the mobile suit and then turn it back to this. Like I said, if you're a huge fan of the Eclipse, then what you'll want is to buy two, one to have like this and the other one to have like the mobile suit. Um, I will say that the reason why I don't like transformations on mobile suits is that I feel like I said way in the beginning of the video, um, my biggest gripe with the kit, as much as I love it, is that it seems, and I'm sure this is what, what happened, is the designing principle of this suit was to fit in a transformation, which I think that's where a lot of its weaknesses comes from. Uh, and just like I mentioned on Reddit when I posted a picture to one of the commenters is, uh, if this kit didn't include a transformation, it would be a hundred times better because uh, then you would get rid of all of the little loose pieces in the leg area, which I think is its biggest weakness. That's according to me and I could feel that a lot when I turned it right into this. But anyway, like I said, this is it. I wish I could show more. There's really nothing else you can do aside from add backpacks, but this is all you get. Um, I just think it's an unnecessary transformation. If you guys disagree with me, let me know in the comments and tell me if you do like this um, transformation side of things with the Eclipse. Uh, but with that said, I'm gonna turn this bad boy back and get right onto the verdict. Hey guys, so apparently now I'm being asked to take a look at this kit too for Jess. Uh, I don't know why, he, he knows I'm not gonna give a serious answer on this, but let's get over with this. So yeah, the Eclipse, honestly, I was apprehensive at first when I saw it. Just put it in my hands. It's not bad. It's got a few points on it that I had some concerns with, namely these wings looking kind of cheap from the inside. But you know what? Overall, kind of cool. 
and yeah, it's well done, honestly. But I prefer this. <laughs> hey guys, so I'm here too. <laughs> Yo, it's the seed kit. Holy shoot, it's been so long since they actually came out. Since between the Zaku and now I get a look at the Eclipse Gundam too. I'm excited, I'm happy. I'm not super thrilled with the hollow-ish wings, but then after looking at it, there's quite a bit more details in there. So I'm very, very happy that they did something, but I still don't like the hollow effect. Uh, the new options they actually threw on this to be able to use all the striker packs and also the wizard packs from the Zaku is gonna be my biggest hype in the world for this thing. Because now I actually have room for all my old, like say, seed kits and also the Destiny like Impulse series to actually throw on this guy. So, but we're gonna get to that later on. Uh, the design, really new, sleek. Am I a fan of the full transformation? Not always, I know Kevin, if he was around, he would enjoy that part. But uh, looking and playing through, so far everything feels tight and nice. So for me as the builder for just straight painting, it's gonna be nice and easy. So, go so there. <laughs> Say what you're thinking, Derek. All right, guys. So I am mince way of putting on the wizard pack, and I actually <sighs> I snapped in the wizard pack and try and move the leg and articulate it into the proper position. But then this little tiny, tiny little fin that's on the ankle side here that actually came flying straight off, and then not just the the outside piece, the inside piece that actually connects in into the ankle also came off too. And I'm like, okay, I thought I broke it, but no, I didn't. It just was very loose and it came right off. So I'm a little disappointed on that one, but you know what? I'm going to try to perfect this and hold it into place because it seems like everything from like the actual knees up is actually sturdy, but then going down from like the shins and into the ankles, that's where it's, not giving exactly like the sturdiest motion at all and it looks a little awkward right now sadly I, I'm you're supposed to use like the launcher system and also like off of the other Zaku but because I have the P Bandai Zaku Warrior uh, uh, I, the play Zaku I'm gonna be using his backpack thinking do not it's right because he this is supposed to be a speedster in the first place so I thought why not pose it Nope, now it's too back heavy. And it's too front heavy. Shoot. The legs! Stay. Okay, the joints are actually there. Ugh, and the and the plate came off again. What the I heck? told you. Wow. Wow, you're not joking. And it's like I told him that he I told I told Sean and Derek to play around with the kit. Because I want them to experience what I've experienced. The pain that I've endured has not passed on to you. There you go. Have fun with that. <laughs> so I'm wondering if this is one of those th key parts that we actually will have to eventually recommend to glue into place to actually have it more secure. Because right now it's like it's not really a friendly, friendly piece. Because it's not looking at it, the angles of it is that it, it it's not straight. It's supposed to be going in almost near like a 20, 30 degree angle. So the moment I try to snap it on and try to add a little, little force to try to apply it, it just doesn't want to fit. Oh. Two hours later. All speed up and everything and my frustration from putting the legs together and also these, this, uh, this lovely piece of uh, fin that keeps on breaking apart. So, a bit frustrated, but it looks cool. I like the concept still, but it will take some time and 
to angle it properly just to stand it like this like I can't I can't even think of like at moving the hands or any of the legs anyway to keep it standing because the backpack is weights like this and guarantee if Kevin put his like the lightning pack on there which I don't even know how it's gonna work properly that's gonna topple over easily I think so but do I it's still cool I like that I still love my seat kits <laughs> all right guys so they brought me back because Derek put a backpack on this thing um, honestly doesn't change my opinion that much I mean it just adds more bulk to something that really didn't need it uh, frankly I think it looks better without backpacks on it Needs more. but that being said I know the seed way of life is as Derek just interrupted it's backpacks for days but Need more. shut up over there no honestly i think it looked better without a backpack on it in my honest opinion i think it had a better better silhouette better pre presence and it just made me like this zaku even better <laughs> all right guys here he is all transformed back to his mobile suit design the eclipse in its full glory as i like to say um let me just start off by saying that i really enjoy this kit uh, I really like the whole build process of it there are some things that you guys have to keep in mind that I mentioned throughout the video like the ones on the legs the whole transformation which I'm not a fan of um, and but everything else to me just seems great I, I love it I think Bandai did a really good job with the design um, and not, not again knees down terrible knees up amazing the silhouette the presence of this kit uh, is really going to sit there on your shelf if you put it especially with the base that it comes with in a nice pose it's gonna it's gonna demand that presence like look um, I love every single aspect of it though uh, after those little quirks that I spoke of earlier the weapons remember this is just for me uh, the, the type of builder that I am I like to customize my kits um, you know panel lining scribing plot plating all that stuff I really like to do that and I can see myself doing a lot with this kit um, along with uh, paint schemes, I know that people like Drawns, people like Magic Mike, people like uh, Saintism will do a lot with this. I would love to see what Otaku Builder can do regarding LEDs, as the cavity right here on the chest is nice and hollow within it, so you'll be able to get a lot of uh, customizing out of this kit. Uh, regarding the backpack gimmick, you know, adding the striker packs from the rest of the seed line, if that's something that I care about, to be honest, I don't really care for that. It's a nice plus. I think that for those who are huge fans of the Seed series, they will enjoy that and they'll be able to do a lot uh, with the whole accessibility um, through the backpack of this kit. I think that's a really big plus. Uh, transformation wise, honestly, like I said before, uh, I'm biased because I don't care for transformations and I think this is, I, I just would not, I'm never transforming this kit after this. Um, I don't think it's worth, I don't really care for the transformation. If you do and you like it, then that's awesome. Uh, personally, this is this is just amazing. I just love the silhouette. As I already put it up next to Sasabi, the new, and a bunch of other kits, you guys can just see the presence that this kit demands. So, should you get it? 100% yes. I feel just for the fact that you'll be able to do uh, a whole new build that is different from everything else that's come out recently uh, regarding how pointy it is, the silhouette of it, and I accidentally popped something off uh, over here. I'll have to figure out where that goes. <laughs> That doesn't matter. Uh, again, I do want to thank Plamod for sending us this kit so fast and letting me review it. Um, I think it's awesome, uh, the details, everything. So definitely go out to your hobby store, check it out, and let us know what you think. If you made it this far in this video, remember to like it. If, of course, you enjoyed it and dislike it if you didn't like it. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell uh, to be notified whenever we bring out a new video. Uh, and with that said, guys, it's Master Great Jess signing off. Let me know if you're going to get the kit. And talk to you guys later.